when you are trying to mount a horse, you gather the reins or the holes on the left hand, and holding the mane of the horse and the backside of the saddle, you try to push your feet into the stirrup. At that time, however great a rider you may be, you are a bundle of wet potatoes on the side of the horse. And the horse is generally tall. <laughs> and if you are a little short one, you are in trouble. Your one leg is so high, you are hanging on it, no doubt. But your toes alone touch the ground. With the toes, you have to get the spring necessary to throw your right leg on to the back, I mean, uh, over the back, over the top of the horse to ride on it, to mount it. Now, the horse is full of energy. He knows that the master is trying to jump on me. Therefore, he doesn't want this freedom to be given up. He becomes restless. At that time, any rider is very pitiable, helpless. But once and twice you try to kick the earth, and when once you get the spring necessary, and you throw your leg on the other side, now the horse knows there is a master there. Thereafter, that trained horse can be made to stand as still, fully still, or make him run. Think? It can make him gallop or trot. Whatever the master wants, the horse will do. Turn right or left. Everything implicitly the horse will follow. Once you have mounted in the same way, at this moment when you and I sit down for contemplation, the horse runs wherever it likes. You are helpless. You say that I have no concentration to me. <laughs> this my mind is a terrible thing. Yes. So one who is trying to bring the mind under his control, which is the first thing, for that, karma, karana mucchari. Through work, dedicated work, egoless and desireless work, activity and service of the society, the existing vasanas get exhausted. It is the vasana pressure in you that makes the mind so restless and running about. And once you have mounted the horse, Yoga Arudhasya, one Arudhavan, Arudhavan, one who has mounted the steed of the mind and brought the mind under his control. Tasyeva, to him alone we advise, Shamakkarana Mucha. There afterwards, quieten the mind more and more. It's called the path of contemplation. So in the beginning, the mind must be employed to act in fulfilling your obligatory duties. And when that is done without ego and egocentric desires, the existing personas get exhausted and the mind becomes quieter and quieter. And once you does, the mind has come under your control. Thereafter, activity in the outer world is not necessary. You start contemplating wherein the anxiety, the active, wherein the program is to quieten the mind more and more. Shama karana muchari. 